Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about Islamic scholar, philosopher, mystic and poet Ibn Arabi and his ideas and concept of God often summed up as the unity of being. I've spoken about Arabi on this channel before but I'd like to take a minute just to talk about him a bit before we dive into this amazing topic. So Ibn Arabi is called the greatest sheikh and he's both a revered and a controversial figure in Islamic history but undoubtedly one of the most interesting largely because of his cosmological and metaphysical ideas some of which we'll be talking about today. Ibn Arabi was born in 1165 Murcia, Spain which was then called Al Andalus he has written hundreds of works, only some of which have been translated into English. Very few people could claim to have read them all, and fewer still could claim to understand them. But his works are important because they've had an immense impact inside of and outside of the Islamic world. So, so what then is Ibn Arabi's concept of God? God in Islamic theology and for Ibn Arabi is the absolute, eternal, everlasting, boundless, omnipotent, omnipresent. God in fact has limitless names and attributes. God exists through his essence which is largely unknown. There is nothing like God. In the Meccan revelations translated by Chittick and Morris, in Ibn Arabi's cosmological perspective, God is the first existent within spiritual creation in order to make manifest the divine attributes or the divine names. Quote, he brought the world into existence to make manifest the authority of the names, since power without an object, a provider without one provided for, a helper without someone helped, and a possessor of compassion without an object of compassion would be realities whose effects are nullified. For Ibn Arabi, the absolute is the real the truth, the one. You have the absolute, then the essence is an aspect of the absolute that has attributes. The divine names are indicative of said attributes. Creation is a reflection of those divine names. But Ibn Arabi, like other Sufi philosophers, presents a stricter view of Islamic monotheism. For Arabi, God or the real is the only necessary being that cannot not exist. All else is in fact dependent on God. For the creation, being is on loan. A creature does not own its being and can never be independent in itself or do without him who lends it being. A creature is a mere potential, contingent on the only real. Therefore, nothing can be said to be truly real but God. Thus, nothing truly exists but God. But if, according to Ibn Arabi, only God exists, then what about creation and the existence we experience around us? If only God exists, then does that mean that creation is God as well? Yes and no. Creation is but a reflection of the truly real. Arabi means that what we perceive as reality in the sensible world around us can be likened to a dream or illusion or rather a mere reflection or shadow of the real. To put it another way, all men are essentially asleep in this world until they pass away or attain a level of spiritual realization before death. However, this dreamlike or illusory state of creation is not valueless, nor is it false. It simply means being a symbolic reflection of something truly real. 
Consider this mirror metaphor. Ibn Arabi spoke of God as a mirror of the world. A mirror image is both the mirror and the object that it reflects. Or the image is neither the mirror nor the object. Thus, creation can be viewed as God or not Him. With respect to humanity, Ibn Arabi also spoke of man as a mirror of God, using the cosmic mirror metaphor, which I have explored in other videos as well. The cosmic mirror reflects the divine names of which Adam or mankind is the spirit of reflection. And once this mirror is polished and flat, God can be reflected splendidly and the otherness of the mirror can be totally effaced so divine reality and humanity can be perfectly aligned. But is God then merely transcendent and separate from creation? Yes and no. God is both transcendent and immanent. God is self-sufficient and not reliant on any relationship with the cosmos or creation. But what then about God's immanence? The absolute, we are reminded, is both far and near to creation, incomparable and comparable to creatures. All creation is the direct self-disclosure and manifestation of the real and the divine names. The Quran, for instance, accentuates the nearness of God to his creatures and uses creaturely qualities to explain God. God is nearer to a man than his jugular vein. God is intimately aware of his creatures and everywhere you turn is the face of God. God is the hearing and seeing and so on. God has breathed from his own spirit into Adam. In the Hadith, we are told that God made man in his own image. We are left, therefore, to embrace the paradox here. Each thing is at once far from God and near to God, incomparable to God and comparable to God, imbued with God's spirit and substance, yet differentiated from him. For Ibn Arabi then, according to William Chittick, the world which appears as unreality and illusion is in fact nothing but the one real showing his signs. Rather than excluding all things, God's unity includes them. Suffice to say, there is none like unto God. To add another layer of understanding, we look at Arabi's ideas on cosmic unification, or rather an interpenetration of attributes with the divine, especially in his treatment of the prophet Abraham. Let me explain. For Arabi, God is light. The creature is also light, but something added and individuated. The return of the creature to God through prayer and good actions can be described as light upon light. Abraham, therefore, through his reaching to God and as a most intimate friend of God, was able to enjoy an interpenetration of attributes with the divine or to experience the divine. Much like the dyeing of a garment where the color permeates the cloth. Arabi says in the Basils of Wisdom, quote, Abraham was called the intimate of God because he had embraced and penetrated the, the attributes of the divine essence. Abraham then did not cease approaching God with good acts until God loved him, and this love consists of the penetration by the divine spirit, which courses through every organ and limb of the servant's body. Therefore, the real becomes his hearing and seeing and all faculties. The real then becomes manifest in the form of his servant and vice versa. I'll conclude with some lines from the poet himself. 
I have two aspects, he and I. But he is not I in my I. In me is his theater of manifestation. And we are for him vessels. So this is just a simplified way of communicating some of Arabi's very basic ideas about the nature and concept of God. But Ibn Arabi's is a complex body of work and we cannot fully capture all his thoughts and ideas in this video. So do look at the other videos on my channel and in the description box below I'll link you to my sources and recommended reading. Thank you so much for tuning in and taking the time. Peace.